Welcome to the Mycroft 21st of September DevSync. And today marks the beginning of a new sprint. Uh, so let's go over our last sprint and check out the status of that. And then uh, we'll have a discussion about uh, the new milestones that we've uh, put together and, uh, and how that's going to affect the, uh, the next few sprints that we want to plan after. So, uh, Chris, do you want to take over and show sure. us the current sprint? Okay. Uh, I think it could be argued that the sprint was overplanned. <laughs> There's a lot that didn't get done, but uh, we'll go ahead and go through it. Well, let's keep it high level. If stuff that's like, um, see, so let's try to keep it high level. If there's stuff that's uh, not okay, um, not even started, then let's take a look at that and try to like break it into chunks uh, or the epics that they're assigned to uh, might be a good way to do that. Uh, let's see if there's, uh, you know, let's try to find a pattern to what did and did not get done, and what's you know, it seems like there's a lot of stuff in review. And a lot of stuff in progress. So. Yes. So um, I'll go ahead and get started. Um, I did finish the the code to upload the uh, the precise data into Selene is merged into Dev, so that is done. Um, I also have a pull request for storing the wake word samples and. Um, the data deletion stuff. So that um, those three things will be the next version of Selene. Um, once those get reviewed sometime this week, I will do a release of Selene that includes those things. Um, and then I'm working on converting the existing Maria DV for precise into Selene. I have the data from Ken. I'm just working through that. Um, and this is all related to wake word collection and tagging. And then I, you know, I did not get to any of the uh, any of the tagger stuff um, last week. So, um, so yeah, that's. I also got the uh, we got the WordPress droplet done, which has been lingering for quite some time. So that was nice. Um, so yeah, that is my update um, for this sprint. Any questions on that? So the items that are still in the to-do category for the wake word collections and tagging, um, all of those are still things that need to be done, right? They're, they're sort of... Yeah, they're all the next step. They're you're doing the tagging UI and the, and the backend stuff that needs to be done <laughs> for that. All right. And uh, it looks like your stuff is either in the to-do category in the in-review category, so you should be able to continue making progress on on the same, on the next issue, next set of issues. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I certainly have plenty to do. I have one in progress there that I'm, I'm still, I'm almost done with the conversion, and then I'll, I'll move on to some tagging stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, Ken. Can we just filter by Ken's issues? Ken? Oh, he's, he's talking. He's just muted. Oh, you're muted, buddy. I can see if you'll move or not. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when I'm lying? My lips are moving. So, <laughs> <laughs> the expand vocab of yes, no. The low-hanging fruit piece is done. The ticket was upgraded with the extra uh, yes, no's that I put in there. But I, I don't even know if it's worth releasing. Uh, it's just, I don't think that's the issue. Um, the deeper issue is the... Uh, line turnaround stuff. Uh, so, you know, that's not in progress yet. 
Uh, it's going to take some work, so I've uh, left that in the to-do uh, category. Same with the message bus visualizer. On new model creation, this is kind of waiting for the process, so that's why it's in progress. Uh, all the code's ready to go. Um, I'm just waiting for the database to be turned around, and then I'll convert the select from the old MariaDB structure to the new structure, and then we should be able to integrate. Uh, probably be a couple of days of work on that. Um, no audio output on first boot up. Um, to the best of my knowledge, the SJ201 fixed that. Um, and so I'm leaving it open for now, but I could theoretically close it, I suppose. Um, I am currently actively working on the next ticket, which is the SJ201 based enclosure skill. Uh, let me look, automate precise model validation tool. Actually, new model creation is done. I created a new model. I should probably close 69 because um, I already created that and created the branch in the repository that holds the default model that's sent out to everybody and the new model I created with instructions on how to uh, update your model. Uh, and that was done as part of the project um, for... I keep calling it project overload, but for that project. So we can, yeah, we can say that's done. That's that's fine. Um, over here, automate. So automate precise model validation tool is kind of what I'm working on. Uh, can we go back a couple of seconds? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so with the new model, do you think that's something that we should, you know, push out and, and invite people to test out properly? Or? I, you know, OK told me that it didn't seem to work for him. You gave me a thumbs up. Ake gave me a thumbs down. So I was undecided <laughs> and waiting for feedback from everybody else. In what way does it not work? He said that it didn't improve the experience for his significant other. And that was kind of the goal. Gez okay. said it did. Well, I'd love to believe Gez. Yeah, you can leave new model creation. Well, uh, yeah, I think I think very easily both could be true. <laughs> like, yeah. You know. Yeah, so I'm um, kind of waiting for more feedback, but my point being from a ticket perspective, it's done. The new model is up and available to anybody that wants to pull it down and yeah. run it. Uh, I gave it to Jarbass. And yep. he, he promised me he'd test it, but he hasn't yet. The last time I pinged him, he said, "Well, I've been kind of busy." And well, I just uh, wonder if we do a if we do a forum post that says, you know, here's a here's a new model that you know Ken's made. Like, if you've been having trouble with the other one, feel free to give this one a go. Here's how. Let us know what you think. Um, maybe Chris could assign that to you. You could do that and then close it. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if, if people are already having not a great experience, then uh, there's no harm in, in them trying something else. Right. And the automate precise model validation tool is what I was getting at. To me, that's the end result of what we're working on as new models are created. It then compares after it runs them against its default test set and, see, and looks to see if the recognition is better than the prior model. So that's going to happen automatically once the database is ready. And so that's what I was getting at. That's the ticket that once I integrate in a couple of days and change the data model or the, the selects. Chris, you and I can talk about it. I don't know if it's going to be selects or if it's going to be an API. Um, then I can go ahead and put this one to rest. But it's kind of blocked right now. So that's why it's in progress. And I haven't started on refactor intent service yet. Um, that promises to be fun, but yeah. Uh, can you open that one, the intent service? Um, okay, so is this one that is uh, necessary for the current milestone that we're working towards? I mean, I, I understand that it's a high priority probably just because it's a refactoring issue um, and it may be... It's... It, it, it's um i mean it, it doesn't it, i mean it's it is a literal refactor so it doesn't change anything um i've had a look at the code and it, it looks like a good um it looks like good changes uh in terms oh, of so this isn't work to do this is reviewing some okay so this is just a 
Just a PR review, yeah. Ah, oh, okay. So this is just a pull request review? Yeah, yeah. Ken's assigned, assigned to it to review the request, not to do any, any coding. Okay, my mistake. I'll look at this and uh, I'll do a code review. I'll move it to I'll review. That. I think that's a little confusing too. Yeah, I'll do that first yeah. thing in the morning. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I'll get to that first thing in the morning, Jeff. Okay. So that goes over um, the existing ones. The It looks like uh, Core 324, the uh, vocab one, is either done uh, or should be in review or, or in test or should be renamed because it looks like you're interpreting it as solve the rollover issue uh, yeah. but this was one of the many ways we could have solved that issue and so the idea was to try this one see if it solves their problem for them and uh, and if it does then we you know then we can close it out if it doesn't we can still close it out and just say we solved the problem um, the other thing I meant to document, and I didn't, and I'm pretty sure by default, the config setting that says um, display an audio alert when listening, that's configured off in our default configuration. Is that a correct statement? Sorry, I missed that site again. We have a configuration setting that says uh play an audio alert when we're going into listening <coughs> mode and i believe it is turned off by default is that true on, on your device on the mark ii credit apps it is but uh... so my my point being that if we were to ed this could be an education issue that if we educated them to turn that on and wait until they heard that beep their yes, no problem would probably go away. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's Michael, what, what, do you, what do you recommend we do there? Well, I think we should uh, update core 311 to include that as a possible answer. And um, then, yeah. Yeah, let's send them that info. See if that see if that solves the problem for them. Okay. Okay. But the work to expand the vocab is this. The, this work is done. Yeah, it's done. Ken says it's. He's not convinced. That well, it's, it's not. It's not in the. It's. It hasn't been merged at all, right? Cool. I haven't seen a payout for it. I don't even know if it's worth going through that process. Is my point. I suspect the educational approach would bear fruit. Well, I think, because I think other people have had issues with the vocab <laughs> of it. So I, th I think this is one of those, you know, different circumstances for different people. Um, so I think it will. Integration test for this or, or unit test? Not really. Right? A lot of the audio stuff is really tough to test. I was going to ask the same thing about the intent service refactoring if we had spawned any vk tests do you catch capture that i think that any any test that tests skills automatically tests that because mm. all the skills are intent based so as long as the skills are still working the intents are still working then the refactor works i think would be the idea there fair enough um yeah but you're right about the you know, audio for yes and no, that we'd need a whole anchor. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's something, it's a bridge we're going to have to cross at some point. And it's not clear to me where our VK tests run, but if they run in the cloud in a headless server, then that's not going to work because a headless server doesn't automatically include devices for non-existent hardware. It's, it's on the roadmap to... Uh, expand the VK tests to to start to basically expand the pipeline. Right now, it's you inject a, a a bit of text that goes into the intent parser, and you know, and then out from there. Um, but it's on the roadmap to be able to start a test with a sample bit of audio coming in. You know, probably with you know specified timing between the next audio sample and things like that. Right. So that's that's on the roadmap. We haven't hit that point yet. So. Okay. 
So what should we do with 324? That was my question to Michael. What do you want to do? <laughs> uh, I'm inclined to uh, run, just run the regression tests on it, make sure it works, and then merge it in. Uh, I'll yeah, that's, 324 is the yes, no. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think what makes sense is I'll update 324. I'll put in the informational approach. Who's going to actually interface with our contacts at that place and tell them that because um, that's who I would want to assign it to. In other words, the last comment will be, here's what you should tell them. And then here, assign it to the person that's going to tell them. Do I hear any volunteers? Josh isn't here. I say yeah, we assign I, it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've been I've been more the point of contact on the technical side. So, um, you know, if you've got, are we sending them a new image? Because <clears throat> we can just turn the sound back on in the new image if we're doing that. Well, it seems a bit heavy just to have them go in and change a config parameter from false to true. True. Um, but I can tell them I can give, you know, I can tell them the the one liner to turn that back on. Or I can give it to Derek or whoever's going to meet with them. Yeah, we. I was just trying to think if it was worth setting up like a shared drive with them. I think we we could you know probably do that. Um, add some extra documentation and stuff in there as well. Might be useful. Okay. Well, so am I hearing? Short term, why don't we just have Gaz email them the solution? Right. So I think what I'm hearing is assign this to Gez and be done with it. Yeah. I think we need to spawn a new ticket, though, that uh, addresses the, the bigger issue that you found around timing. I was just creating that. And possibly one that is a tip of the iceberg, which is if there are people that are having trouble having their yes, no, in their language being recognized because that really becomes a back-end issue. And I don't want to go there in this meeting about what we would have to do to fix that, but keep in mind what we are doing for that from a high level regarding speech to text. And the fact that <coughs> this is then going to also have to carry that language information up with it and i don't know like you know for niet i don't know how well the recognizer is going to handle <laughs> niet. so anyway my point is there's actually two sub there's two different tickets here potentially the one that i mentioned which is line turnaround and that requires refactoring and speaks to barge in and the one that Gez talked about, which is the community complaining that they have problems having their languages yes, no being recognized. Okay. Well, it's more that they're, they're doing it in English, but they, you know, English may not be their first language. Um, and so with accents and stuff, then things don't always get interpreted the same way. Is the yes, no question is that does that go through the translation services or not yeah yes oh well it's in if if someone has their language set to german it will look in the german directories vocab directories for what yes and no is in german yes okay yeah but what i was getting at guess is when it finally makes it to stp in the cloud is that information relayed along with it uh, so it goes to STT first, it turns the transcript of the STT and then Mycroft checks its, Mycroft checks the, the vocab within Mycroft core or the skill for whether yes, no exists or what yes, no actually is in that, in the language that they've set it to. I'd recommend we have a brief discussion after we terminate the meetings recording so I can expound upon where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah I don't want to uh, 
get too much into problem solving on these calls for sure. So right. uh, definitely take a note of the sounds like the two tickets that we need to create out of this and uh, let's uh, move on. Um, okay, so that's the status for Ken. Um, who's next? Do we, sorry, just to follow one final thing, the, the reducing the turnaround, my turnaround time, do we want that in the next sprint or is that going to the backlog? Let's go ahead and put it in the next sprint and then we'll decide when we're planning. Right. Cool. Mother creation. Yeah, so uh, I feel like somehow, you know, it, looking at the board makes you uh, realize you need to spend more time putting things on the board because uh, it doesn't feel like an accurate reflection of the last two weeks, but you know. <laughs> um, uh, so I think like there was a number of um, CI fixes that did get through all the way to the end. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that I ended up diverging to was documenting community processes, which is so at um, NYC 461 in review, which is the um, essentially the, the handling PRs when they first get in there, and then moving to um, the bottom one in in progress, which is around how we can uh, tie in feature requests in a more um, structured way. Um, so they're, I think, quite important and quite useful to, to keep going on. Um, I posted the PR labeling one in, in the community for, for feedback last night. Um, but I don't know that it'll get that much interaction um, just because it's very developer focused. Um, uh, the spec out media playback system is a, is a big thing and I think it needs to happen for us to be able to move forward with that. Um, it's kind of stalled a little bit just because I haven't put any work into it in the last few days because um, I've been focusing more on the PR stuff uh, and those the two bug yeah, bugs in the in progress column they're still hanging over from the um, the service status stuff um, and then a lot of the stuff down in the to do column is um, pull requests, uh, except for the the bottom couple, which are um, yeah things things that are semi important but not urgent, and so I, I bump them down the priority list. Um, and then the posting the Matu images. For the community, I realized that it needed a lot more context than just sort of dropping the, the two system images out there. So I started writing a, a blog post for it. Um, but that also just felt like less of a priority than, than getting our pull request system flowing better. So that's where things are at at the moment. Um, Okay, so you're primarily focused on like, getting the community interaction process mm. to be more efficient and smooth and predictable and yeah. happy for everyone. Yeah. Um, all right. Okay, thanks. Uh, Derek? 
guess. Um, <clears throat> okay, so yeah, I still got a lot of stuff in progress. A um, couple of these things are actually more like uh, Kevin's stuff, but um, yeah, so like an in progress, I've got we've got to evaluate PCBA for full symbol SJ two hundred one. Um, a lot of that is actually stuff that Kevin's been tackling, quoting uh, the next round of, of prototypes, but there's still some things we're working on. So um, they're, you know, that he's addressing in terms of, you know, kind of talked about on Friday. So not quite ready for that. Um, <clears throat> and this next ticket, the SJ203 display driver, I think we could probably back burner this or put it as not uh, won't do maybe this is the um, we're thinking about creating our own display driver um, but at the time at this time it, it's not really feasible because it's the complexity um, so we're looking to just source the display with the, the display driver included <clears throat> Um, so the next one, uh, is, is I was working on that a bit on Friday and today, um, that's the first FDM 3D print of the SJ201 based design required the FDM variant, the SJ240. Um, so yeah, I've been working on that and I've got one part, uh, started on the printer for that. But it's likely going to take me, well, uh, just even printing, it takes, you know, uh, half a week just to, to get everything printed. So it's going to be an ongoing project this week. Um, and the two GUIs. How long, does it, how long does it take to print? Like, really, it takes like 100 hours? Uh, well, whenever I first print something the first time around, it's like, I don't have things really. I like print it as it get, as it gets done, you know. So like, I don't optimize and nest things and multiple parts and stuff. So I'm like, oh, I got this part done. I throw it on the printer, you know. And then it's like 12 hours, you know. So yeah, it takes a while to get to a point where like I'm doing four or five parts in one run. Um, that's just kind of how I do. Uh, but yeah, yeah, eventually, you know, with a decent sized build platform, you know, nesting and like some optimization, yeah, I might be able to get it done in, you know, one day. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> and then the last thing there on the, the in progress was the GUI uh, for the tagger. I kind of worked on that up until about Thursday last week, and then kind of still some several things need to be completed there. Um, but kind of got uh, busy on, on more of the part two stuff and updating the slide deck. Uh, so I had, I didn't get a chance to kind of complete that. So partially because of our discussion on Friday too, of, of our priorities and Chris got uh, distracted with a number of things as well last week. So I don't think he got, I, I hope I wasn't blocking him on not having that fully completed. No, you weren't blocking me. So this week you might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. You. Well, I think it's. I think. Uh, yeah, I think I, right now. I can dedicate. I can get that done in the next day or two. Um, so yeah, like the updated slide deck that's in the done column. We've got uh, prototypes since Ken. I've got Chris's. Let's. Um, Let's find a time tomorrow. I can drive this up to you. Maybe we can meet halfway. Yeah. Um, with sitting right here on my desk, ready to go. Um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing that I, I don't have on here, but since we talked about it, is and the um, is uh, updating some of this bomb stuff. Uh, Michael asked. Uh, Kevin and I to kind of tidy up the bomb and get it a little bit more ready for a realistic quoting. Um, so Kevin's kind of approaching it in, 
his end with the electrical engineering stuff, and now I've got all the kind of other things like the, the display, and the, the speaker drivers, and screws, and cables, and then you know the plastics as well. So <clears throat> getting all that uh, organized and, and ready to to quote for not only just for um, the dev the first round of dev kits that they don't require housing, but they will require all the parts, the speakers, and the cables, and everything. Um, but then you know getting ready for the, the big time as well. So I started I started work on that a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what where I've got in the sprint. Um, I did throw a couple tickets in the backlog to make a, a prototype for you, Michael, uh, to be ready for for when we get a board that you can have, and then one for um, Gaz as well. With this is going to be the laser cut design. Um, and then Josh has actually already got the parts cut for his size shirt in the parts. He went ahead and printed and cut himself a set. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's where that's where I'm at. I still think a lot of this is going to take me at least a, probably a, a week to finish. One thing I've been thinking about is how far to go. Like the bomb itself is one aspect of it, but going through and getting more realistic production quotes and like a whole package ready, um, you know, quoting out the plastics, like all that can be pretty intensive in terms of, you know, sending all that stuff out and and following up and everything. Well, we're we're not ready to sign any contracts about you know milling out a you know injection mold or anything like that. So. Um, we don't need to go that far down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, it would just be preliminary, but it'd give us some ballpark stuff. But yeah, we can wait. <clears throat> so I might need to load a couple things in the backlog, but one of, one of the other things too is this camera evaluation module bit. Uh, I haven't really done anything on that yet. Um, so I need to get, uh, I do have one of the old uh, first gen cameras and um, you know, at least plug it in and, and see what the quality looks like and stuff. Okay. So, it that's, also sounds that's like what we should add uh, another ticket for actually choosing a display module now. Since we're not designing a display module, we're going to find an off the shelf one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I actually do need to do it. So, I have been chasing parts. For the display and for the, the speaker driver because their speaker driver is just like way too expensive right now. Um, so I can add tickets for that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, the only people left are Josh and Michael. Um, do you know where? Josh is on the last pass credential stuff. I knew he was going to clean it up. I haven't heard anything. Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, I'm, I'm in review of that uh, issue. Or, uh, well, Josh is. Josh is reviewing. I don't. I don't know the status on that. Okay. Um, the I2S audio popping issue. I'm actually going to meet with Kevin later today and try to sort that out. There's a couple of possible solutions, but uh, we don't we don't have a good handle on it just yet. Okay, and uh, limited run planning? Um, yeah, actually Johnny and Chris Adair are uh, working on that. Uh, so we can put that in progress. All right. So, should we complete this sprint and plan the next? Yeah, we should. We'll see if we can get a little bit more uh, realistic about the, what we can do in the next one. Yeah. That, <laughs> so, yeah, just in the in the retrospective sense, that we seem to have a, an awful lot um, in there that didn't get we didn't get to for one reason or another. So, well, we um, put in things uh, based on um, at sort of like the epic level, 
right? And so mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily scoped to fit within the two weeks. Uh, although I think that, uh, you know, without the interruptions that were unpredictable, you know, it, it may have been a little more realistic. So I guess that's a question for you guys. Would you rather um, build in some buffer time, uh, knowing that we're going to have interruptions, and uh, you know, then the, the only downside to that is, might be that you complete your work early, and you have a couple extra days left in the sprint to start working on the next one, um, uh, or you know, plan to try to fill out the two weeks and you know expect that we probably won't get to everything. I would rather have too much to do personally, but I also, you know, don't want to give you the impression that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So <laughs> I, I almost agree with Chris in that I don't, I don't know, building in buffer time at the engineer level seems a bit awkward. That's usually a, uh, a managerial device. <laughs> Wanted to give you the option. I mean, I did just watch the uh, Lower Decks episode about buffer time, so you know. <laughs> All right. I mean, either way, there's always more to do. It's just like, right. Yeah. Well, we have a whopper of a sprint plan right now. <laughs> yeah. Um. So let's go through and see if we can. Uh, do we have a the follow-on sprint? So this one's going to be 15, right? Yeah, that, that's, I just closed it and everything. 15 so, already existed and there were a few issues in there. Now everything from 14 that wasn't done yeah. is now in 15. Yeah, so I think that we should uh, create a 16 sprint and go through and, and try to... Uh, um, 16 is created. It is? Okay, so let's let's go through this and try to push things into 16 that are not you know realistic to get done right now. And also, um, you know, take a look at this from the point of view of our first milestone, which is to get dev kits to all of our internal developers, right? We want to get Mark twos to everyone. So if it's not serving that purpose and it's not serving the, uh, or the, not the next milestone, which is getting dev kits out to the developers in our community, um, then, uh, you know, we should see if there's, um, if we can deprioritize those tasks. And, and put more focus on the things that will get us uh, closer to completing those first two milestones. I would say right. just the first milestone, but uh, you know, in particular for this one, uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, blockers that are sort of out of most of our hands uh, with respect to the hardware. Uh, that's what. All right, I guess we'll start at the top. Um, Upgrading to Angular 10 is probably the first thing I'm going to do before I start adding logic to Selenium. So, for the tagger, and get the upgrades working. So I think I'll leave that in there. Um, the database schema. Basically, what I've been doing is is implementing what we've talked about piecemeal as I need it for the different pieces. So there's some still some tagging tables. I haven't implemented yet because there's not any code that uses them. Um, so that's what that is. Um, dependencies for different tag types that came up out of a discussion we had recently how um, it's possible for one tag to say okay I, I'm not going to need to tag um, gender if it's not a wake word in the first place that kind of mechanism um, I think we we'll probably need to talk about how to implement that um, I don't know if I might put that in the next sprint. I don't know if we're gonna get that far in this sprint. Okay. Um, tagging UI usage metrics can't be done until a tagger UI is done. So I'm gonna move that as well. Uh, the Mark II Kivy no audio output on first boot up. Yeah, let's keep that in there. Okay. We're keeping that one. Keep this one. Yeah, it's in progress. These are in progress. Okay, this one's still to do. Um, this I think involves. This is also a little bit related to 
um, to phase zero or milestone zero because we don't we need to get the existing image up to 2008. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question to you would be, should I work do this first and then move on to the tagger stuff so we can, this is like higher priority than um, the tagger so we can get moving on the milestone or does it matter? The, I don't understand what the benefit of upgrading up to 2008 is going to be. Uh, just to, it will, it, will, it will stop asking you if you want an upgrade. No, I don't care about that. Okay. Not right now. Then, That's a quality uh, of life thing, which is, you know, important, but not now. So you, could also, you, could also look at, you could look at the ticket that was cut for rollover and set and add it to your blacklist. And it'll also go away if you just add that skill to your blacklist in your config file. Yeah, that was the other alternative was just turning off the update stuff for the rollover folks. So Correct. we can look into that instead. Yeah, then we don't have a ticket for that. Okay, we'll definitely push this one. We don't need that. Okay. We had a ticket for that it was closed because that was the solution. <laughs> we communicate with them and I don't think we ever don't... did the research to figure out which skill or where in the. Ken, Ken did it. I no, I updated the, the ticket. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. it's, in, it's in the ticket, but I don't know who to, you know, when it, when it comes to this point in these tickets where it's now like communicate this to rollover, I'm not sure who to assign them to is the issue. Perhaps we should just assign that to Derek. Which, which well, ticket was it? This is communicating to project rollover that they can turn off the update by blacklisting the skill in the config form. Okay, which I can't see the comments though. Which ticket was it in? Oh. I thought I put um, it down to 16. Hold on a second. It's um MK2144. Oh I'm well that's that's confused. different. Sure, MK. Let me, let me look. That ticket we're talking about was assigned to me, so theoretically it should still be assigned to me. So it might show up. It's not in the sprint. Maybe? Yeah, let me. That's what I'm saying. Let me look at. I have a little yeah, filter here. For my... I'll, I'll put it in the sprint. Yeah, but you're gonna know. You need to know which ticket it is, right? Yeah, I know. It's it's Mark Two One Forty Four. Is it MK One Forty Four? MK Two Dash One Four Four. I just put it in Sprint Fifteen. So. Okay. 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 Um, first limited run of Mark II dev kits. I assume that's still, we don't, we'll get past that. Um, adding a firewall to the Kiwi image. That requires the new image to be built. So I think bump it with the other one. Uh, this was still. Yeah, we don't. That, that's still open um, until we've given them a, a solution. We should leave that one open. All right. Are we going to do twenty point eight point one in the sprint? That's up to you guys. Uh. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I'll leave this in here because it's twenty point eight point one. Uh, yeah. 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 TPS media type support is so is that related to the whole the, the larger issue of how to do media? Is this or are we putting this off or are we just gonna know what he's got so far and take another stab uh, at it? No, I think I think that one needs to needs the the service mapped out first. Okay. So we can take this out of twenty point eight point one, you think? Depends when we release twenty day dot one. As in I haven't got a I haven't got a, a ticket for you know, do the twenty dot eight dot one release. Um it's just things that are contributing towards it. Okay. So should I leave this in the sprint for now? Uh I think most likely bump it and then if I if we magically get to it then that's a great but Okay, this is labeled as 20.8.0. Oh. 
Um, yeah. In. Yeah, leave that one in. It, it's a small change. It's just um, removing things that no longer that aren't needed anymore. But this would be on bar one, right? Yeah. Yeah. We don't have the doc. Oh, never mind. That's that's a skill thing. So it's twenty out eight. Okay. Um, I don't think this really speaks to any of our immediate goals. No, that should be moved out. Well, we should put that in the um, different epic. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have a security epic? For the security changes you're going to make? Yeah, I think we've got too many epics at this point, maybe, but um, <laughs> user experience. Okay. And next sprint or top of the backlog? Top of the backlog. Okay, verifying an install. Is this? I think this speaks to the larger issue that we're investigating regarding updates in general. Mm -hmm. This speaks to Josh's concern that an update fails. How does it restore back to its previous checkpoint? So I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this should go into the milestone three. Uh, well, no, that's not true. Sorry, milestone um, one. Right. The the uh, external devs, at, at the very least. Although we, we've got a, we haven't resolved whether we're going to do uh, make this a, a requirement for the uh, developer yeah. release versus the consumer release. Let's put it in the consumer release update or uh, milestone at the very least, because it's got to be there, right? So um, put that into the polish micro for commercial release, although it's technically not really polish, is it? <laughs> we'll sort that out later. OK. Um, we probably will get to that in the uh, next print. It's, yeah, put it on the top of the backlog. It's, OK. No, this is in progress. We'll leave it there. We should finish it this week. Um, this has got a couple subtasks in it. We got the model creation done, but tagging and data capture. Data capture are still work being worked on, so we can leave that there. Upgrade matter most. So I think a good pace for me probably is to upgrade, do something like this once per sprint. Um, we did the, um, the public website last sprint. Um, Gaz, you think it's more critical to get up Mattermost upgraded or Discourse? Mm. Well, actually, Discourse maybe because that'll unblock one of my things. Okay, uh, so we'll move Mattermost to the next sprint. And let's make sure there is a. Did you, did you create a ticket for discourse upgrade? No, I have not. Okay, you want to create that real quick and put it in the sprint, and I'll yep. get the, in the sprint. Oh, maybe I did. I'll find it and put it in either way. Okay. Uh, let's do that one. <clears throat> yeah, Derek stuff. We can all leave leave all that in there. Okay, this needs to be reviewed, review, review. Some of this is just pulled from the last sprint in progress. Uh, skill API, I think that's probably needs to go to the top of the backlog. I know there's a, there a P, I think there's a PR app for this, right? Uh, it's an open PR and there's documentation. Um, we haven't really, is this one of the things we wanted to take a higher level look at, like a spec, spec it out, that kind of thing? Because it's, 
Well, hmm. I'm trying to remember what the what the bluffer was. Well, let's update the description then, and um, and come back to it next time, or leave it in if you want to take a look at it. You know, in the next couple of weeks, but we should definitely update the description so we know what's blocking it or what it is blocking. I mean, I think it's good to merge. I think. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's linked to yeah. A couple of there. It just needs needs another review. That's all. <coughs> I requested changes that have been made. Okay. I'll leave it in for review then. Okay. Same with the plugin system. Uh, yeah, I think it's from memory. It's good to go. Um, I thought this was coded up. Oh, it's in a pull request. Uh, so put it yeah. In yep, in review. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is going to take a long yeah. time. Um, guys, you need to get to this in the sprint. Um, I mean, we need to do the down lower. I've got to do the Mark II September update. Um, and so we're not really going to do two blog posts, um, in quick succession like that. So I think bump it. Okay. So this is a bug. This, should we put this in the user experience epic? Um, is there are the comments down lower? Or? It says it's in review right now. I think there's the I think there's tickets listed down below. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Okay, and you said you were still working on these were dependent on the status thing, so we'll leave those there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's all your selenium support. Yeah. That one's uh... you. Yeah, so we're leaving Derek's stuff in there. That's in progress. Derek, Derek. So that message bus visualizer task, I mean, that's that may be something that's really useful, especially when we get into the discussion of the timing thing that uh, Tim was talking about. Um, but on its own, I don't think that it's a high priority, right? So it's, it's basically, it's a tool to help with other issues. So. Um, yeah, it can move, it can be yeah. pushed. Let's, let's just push that into the backlog. Um, okay. Audio data file names and their hash value. I think this is a discussion that needs to happen. This sounds like a wake tagger issue too, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about that. I had had some thoughts, you know, late one night, and. Uh... Okay. You and I can just talk offline about that. Yeah. Do we really have uh, the A-B testing? I mean, we're not going to try to get that through that this sprint, right? We're not down there yet. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> I was say, That's those those seem uh, like they can be pushed. <laughs> audio region tagging? What? This is that whole like extracting one of the wake word samples out of a larger sample that may contain multiple wake words, right? So oh, okay. whether we're going to tag regions or extract them and make them their own things, you know, we need to make a decision about that. That's all that is. Okay. 
Can that not go to the next sprint? Uh, depends on if I get to that point in the GUI or not. <laughs> yeah, it'll impact the architecture of the, I mean, in a minor way of the database. Yeah. Probably the UI. Um, so yeah, I'm not push GUI B at the very least down to a future sprint. We're not going to get two of them done. And then that means that we can push A-B testing to the next one as well. Oh, I have not given Kevin access to Jira. That's my bad. I'll, uh, I'll do that. Bomb review. Uh, I bumped that one. Yeah. Uh, Josh is doing this. I also bumped that one, even though, yeah. That's just a PR. OK. It's a, yeah. It's in review. Uh, yeah, this is one I threw in there just because I was seeing a lot of people complain about Blake Word more than usual. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of dig into it. But um, I think I'll, I'll post the instructions for Kevin, uh, for Ken's model first and, and just sort of invite people to holler at me if they're having issues and we can try and dig into it a little bit. A lot of the wake word stuff that I'm seeing on the forums is because they're porting us to really tight environments like pine cones and things like this, and then saying, well, Precise is consuming too much CPU. Let me switch over to Pocket Sphinx, and then it doesn't seem to work that great, and then that's where you're seeing a lot of the chatter from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If people, if people are complaining that Pocket Sphinx doesn't work well, then that's a very well-known, <laughs> very well-known <laughs> thing. Not our problem. Yeah. That's an undocumented feature. <laughs> we didn't write that one. Yeah. Well, and it's in the documentation. Like, it's entirely configurable, but it's entirely not great. So. <laughs> All right. Fine. What is going on with Travis? Yeah, I haven't seen heard about this yet. Uh, it just uh, it was so the the. The build result was just being stuck at, you know, pending um, for some of the tickets. Uh, there was a bug, an outage reported in Travis before I saw this that was the same behavior. Um, anyway, I reached out to Travis and they uh, basically just got me to refresh my credentials in their system and, you know, which shouldn't really affect this, but uh, I haven't seen the issue again yet, so. Do we not host our own Travis server? No. Uh, we host our own Jenkins. So then why are we, from a high level, what's what's the purpose of using Travis instead of Jenkins? We use multiple for different yeah. purposes. I think eventually we'd like to get to one, but uh, right now Travis is doing some things with cores. Pretty much specific to core, isn't it? Like, it, yeah, that's core against specific versions of Python and some other stuff. Um, I yeah, think we well, just put it all in Huntsman, but we just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yeah, and I think it's just because Travis was set up a long time ago, and and it's so easy to get started um, on things on certain things. So, um, yeah, particularly that like building building packages across different versions of Python and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. I guess where I was coming from is, is I mean, if we host our own Jenkins, we know that's free. The only cost to us is the cost of the servers that we house it on. Is that, is that the same model for, for, for Travis or will Travis, Travis is free to open source. What's that? Travis is free to open source companies. Yeah, so Travis is managed, like we're not hosting it, but uh, I don't believe we're paying for it. Either. Regardless of how big we grow, it'll always be free. As long as you stay open source. 
It just seems like we shouldn't have both, but okay. We shouldn't, and we have a plan to get off of both, but or one one of them. But that's just lower on the priority list right now. Um, so I think leave that one open, and I'll I'll just keep an eye on whether it still exists and. Okay. Uh, this was the um, the issue where Microsoft Skills was still building against the twenty o two core image. And so, okay, uh, did a sort of quick fix by modifying the Jenkins file in the Microsoft Skills repo. Um, but we, I think previously there was a, a void conf builder. There was a particular um, Docker image on Hudson um, that we were using instead. And so, okay's Jenkins file just kind of like mimics that as opposed to using the proper Docker image. Yeah, so we need to revert his and and create the next create the real Docker image from core to use, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Um, Hudson yeah. Jenkins Travis. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Hudson is, Jenkins, is one of our Jenkins instances. Yeah, we have two Jenkins instances. We call one Hudson and one Jenkins to try to avoid confusion. Hudson is the one we're trying to get everything on, but we haven't yet. All right. Um, so uh, this sounds like there was a uh, an error in the uh, deployment process. Is that right? This was a, an area that came up from the 2008 release, something we need to add to our 2008 checklist. Right. Uh, basically, we need a new version of the void conf Docker image for each major release. Okay. So. And that got added to the checklist somewhere, right? Yeah. Okay. Chris, did you want to do you this? Said no. that in a way that sounded like you were typing <laughs> it right now. Uh, well, I'm, I'm saying yes. <laughs> and that's fine. Back, that's actually <laughs> Yeah. Which is totally okay. But... <laughs> well, if it gets done. Sure, it's done. <laughs> Chris, did you want to do this? Do you want me to do it? Uh, if you if you know, if, if you think it's going to be easy, then I, I think go for it. <laughs> All right. Hi, yeah. Question voting process. So this is um, yeah, creating that process for the community to 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 request features and and vote on them and and all that sort of stuff. Okay. So here's the discourse ticket. I will do that's the that's the infrastructure ticket. I'll do this sprint. Well, if one of the objectives is to kind of get some of these out of the sprint because it's too big. Are we really going to get into tie-in feature requests and voting processes, Sprint? Well, Gez is more community focused than uh, product focused, like specifically. Uh, so Gez is sort of running in parallel with you know the rest of our milestones. <coughs> I actually think we could probably bump that one and move in the tidy up roadmap for initial release. Um, so maybe bump that and I'm going to move a different one in there in its place. Okay. Which I think should happen first anyway. Um, so I want to take all the work that we did around the roadmap stuff, you know, looking at what's on the roadmap for different technologies and different things and get that, um, get that into a, a format that we can share out and, you know, get input on from the community. Um, and so, yeah, that will either be through Google, like shared Google document um, as the sort of master roadmap, um, but then that links out to individual, you know, technology or project based roadmaps, um, which could either be a, a Google Doc or potentially a project board in GitHub. 
Um, yeah. Okay. All right. And the Mark II September update, is that a blog post that's going out in the sprint? What, what's yeah. Upgrade Discord? Discourse is our um, forum um, community at Mycroft.ai. It's uh, it hasn't been updated in a while. So it, as I mentioned before, I'm going to do I try to do one um, DevOps type thing in each sprint, so we don't lose track of these things. Um, last this one sprint. should be a button click upgrade, presuming nothing goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I'll need to do it in the evening so that we don't. I think we have a like an eight o'clock p.m. Eastern um, time that we do these kind of this type of work. So, um, so yeah. Uh, do we have um, backups of this system? Is this a system that we? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, and Mattermost, they should. Be, they both have backups. Uh, September Mark II update. Is this something you're writing? This spring. Uh, yeah, it's a thing that needs needs to be written. Okay. <laughs> who should I who will be writing it? In case anyone else want to take it on. Bueller. <laughs> well, you need some assets. You need some assets for me anyway. Um, All right. So I can help you with it for sure. All right, assign it to me, and I'll help bug okay. all the people to get it done. I, I think you can push three thirty one into the next sprint, Chris. Okay, so now what we we've been through the God, there's still a bunch of stuff in here. Um, a lot, some of the stuff is already in review and stuff, so I think that's probably a little looks bigger than it really is. Um, so one thing we haven't done then is go through and what types of things do we need for milestone zero to get done this sprint, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so for something I just noticed as I was looking was the laser cut housings for. Gez and Michael, is that something you're going to get to this sprint? Um, is that that's part of milestone zero, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's well, I don't know. Things are still kind of in flux on whether, um, you know, there's going to be any boards to go along with those, but but there's uh, no reason I can't get the housings done and sent out and be waiting. The boards can just be sent directly to Michael and Gez independently. So yes, uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do that. Feel, feel free to hold sending me stuff until it's complete, if you want. Like, it, well, if it's easier to send it separately, then then that's great. But yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's not. I mean, I don't know. It depends. It, it's good. All it all come, has to go through Kevin before it gets to me. So, but. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I could I could package yours up all together. So are we gonna have an S203 driver board anymore now that we're picking off the shelf display? Does this need to be moved to won't do? I thought that was yeah. moved to won't do. Yeah. No, there was a there was a different mm -hmm. task that was in the last sprint that was okay. similar, but uh, I, I wrote a display driver for a LCD or a legend based display 15, 20 years ago. The guy sent me 15 of them and I asked him why and he said, you'll see. And I burned them all out. It's not a trivial issue. So yeah, you can right. be pushed downstream, push it downstream. We're, we're not doing it. We're picking it off the shelf. So yeah, we, well, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually quite an issue with the Xilinx design that we didn't get the rights correctly on the MIPI interface and the, the scope, you know, scoping and checking voltages, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> okay, do we have an epic for milestone zero? We do not. It's kind of in other epics. <laughs> we have an epic for everything but. <laughs> Is milestone zero and one I mean, at least milestone one is Mark two DK prototype, right? Yeah, we we uh, we started calling it milestone zero because uh, we came up with the it's the intermediate milestone of getting a Mark two to L the 
Mycroft employees. Yeah. Yeah. Can we just um, drop it into the same epic or? Or do you want to split zero and one out? Um, I mean, the milestones in the epics are not interchangeable. So uh, I haven't figured out how to do real milestones in Jira yet. So uh, yeah, I don't know that we need to make a, a separate issue for the zero versus one in this system. Okay. Uh, so, do, should we just look at what's in here and see if anything else in the Mark II DK prototype should be included in the sprint? Um, I was just looking for any Mark II uh, tickets that are not in the sprint, and there aren't any. I mean, there, there are literally no Mark II tickets that exist that are not already in progress or in review, uh, which is good. Does that make what about sense? four speaker drivers? That's in a sprint. It's the backlog. Are you sure? No. Okay. That's interesting. Well, then my search query is failing. Yeah, you can put that in a sprint. I mean, it's already, I'm already doing it. It's, I'm, I'm actively doing it. So this sprint? Yeah. Is that in? Is it, no to me, then. <laughs> oh, I don't have access to that issue. What the hell? Oh, well, that's a different problem. <laughs> you have access to other Mark II issues? Uh, that could just be me not doing permissions, right? It might have been a typo. Let me see. Because I'm looking at active sprints. Okay, that's better. Of course, when I look at active sprints, the first thing that shows me is or when I look at the backlog, the first thing that shows me is active sprints. Okay. Um, the source 4.3 inch display with the included DSA. That is that. Your search for a display, Derek? Right, that's the, the search for an affordable, well, you know, reasonable display. Okay, and you're working on that now, so we can. Should this be in the current sprint? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're not doing that. Uh, reorganize documentation in the repo. Michael, is that? All right. I don't think it's blocking anything right now. It's mm, it could be better, but I don't, I don't see this being a critical issue. Okay. Finalize Mark II package. That seems like something that's gonna will be later. How do we define the Mark II package? Uh, I figure that out. <laughs> it didn't say much else, so. Uh, I think you might oh. be talking about dev packages. So I think no. that is presupposing just based on the. Yeah. So what, can we add a description of this so we don't know what, what's this supposed to be? I, I think it's a, a dev package. Oh, Debian. Yeah, sorry. Um, you said dev, but I heard dev. <laughs> uh, but this will be. So that that is, you know, it's like if, if we go down the route of, right? of that distribution <laughs> mechanism, then.
The red dots are bugs, I assume, correct? Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, later milestones. We just leave it, leave it in the backlog. I'll put it at the top of the backlog because it has to do with Mark II. Yeah, but finalized Mark II distribution package, I mean, that shouldn't, I mean, it could be in the backlog, but it's technically not really a backlog issue. It's a future sprint. That's it is, but we only have the next sprint defined. We won't get to it in the next three weeks, I don't think. Oh, I thought, all right. All right. I thought we were moving. What's app get install micro? Is that a curiosity? That's, that's a, you know, the creating a, a, a way to, install Minecraft easily on any Linux systems that use apt. Yeah, we should mark this as don't do. Um, or wish so we just like that. It's not. It sounds like a wish list, yeah. Well, it was the original, we... it was the original re uh, request that ended up with us building a Snapcraft package instead. So right. that was our solution to this. Yeah, why don't we just say won't do for now, yeah. Why does it say add audio test wave file to image? I think I think we have some dot wave files in our standard distribution. What, what would be the purpose of adding another one? I'm not uh, sure we knew that existed when we wrote this ticket. Well, let's see. I wrote it. Um, I mean, I would like something more specific for testing. I mean, we've got like some. Oh, uh, yeah, we like, like that. Uh, some of those songs we wanted to play to test the speakers out and all that kind of stuff too, right? Yeah, there's some concern about that, like eventually when we release it publicly that we don't have, you know, rights to it. So it's been a bit, I need to find a song that we can, that's, you know, no, no copyright problem. But also just- a Mark one singing songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would like to find something that actually specific for like some audio related things that I would like to test, you know, different frequency ranges. All right, I'm gonna assign this to you then so you can do your research. And I'll put yeah. this at the top of the backlog because it is Mark II related. But initially, just to see if it works, yeah, I can just use like the alarm beep or something. But once we get past, are we just printing the backlog right now? Is this I'm just looking for anything Mark II down here. Is all I'm doing. Got it. Got it. I'm like not going to do anything. You're hearing the song back in black. I guess that means you should never interrupt ACDC. That's right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do anything with any TV or GUI issues yet because we do still have to make a decision there. Uh, let's see. Test SJ21 PCBA fit. Oh, it's done. Yeah, I, I just saw a couple of things like that. I've already did that. I don't know. I don't okay, I need to figure out a way to filter duns out of the backlog. <laughs> uh, Derek just changed it. Want to Seems like that should belong in a future sprint. Yeah, the audio performance stuff, yeah, we just don't have anything. We're not far enough along to test that kind of thing yet. Yeah. So is that top of backlog or is that the next sprint? I would think next sprint. Not going to get to it this sprint. No, no, definitely not. So I guess eventually we'll need an integration test for all the Mark II stuff as well, right? Yeah. What, let's remove Pedacious fallback skills. Some of these things just, it just seems like they're creating a large list where we don't need one. This is basically our dumping ground for everything. And eventually we could do stuff like this and go through it and try to move stuff up. Because uh -huh. right. this, this backlog pulls in tickets from every other project yeah. in Jira. Yeah. So, it's everything that exists right. in Jira. Yeah, but my, my, I guess my question is, is it our intent to go through this backlog every two weeks? No. Right now, I'm just looking for Mark II stuff that we might be missing from our immediate um, sprints. On the, yeah, you see something that's not related to Mark II, just don't even bring it up. Um, But it looks like we'll probably need to do some VK stuff from for the Mark II, right? Um, before we ship it, this create feature files for skill on Mark II. Hmm. We do need to finish the Mark II 
I think this speaks to whether the VK tests are Mark II specific or generic. Right now they're Mark I specific. We're building, we're, we're setting the platform on the VK images to Mark I. Because it's yeah, the only enclosure. Yeah. What? Yeah. Question is, should they be enclosure specific? It would seem there would be a set that is generic across all enclosures, and then the enclosures could have enclosure specific tests. But yeah, I don't know that it matters to move it out of the backlog or anything. All right, I'll put it on top of the backlog. I think we have to think about that. Uh, mono versus dual speakers in that's, dev. That's some point down the road, not right away. OK. These are all down the road things. There's a, there's a, if we're going to show all the issues, it's going to be a zillion. You're going to have to filter by Mark II yeah. related stuff. And I've gone, I've gone through the Mark II related um, tickets only, and there's, you know, I don't know, there's, I guess there's only 45 in the backlog, I guess. But there's, um, but really none of them pertain to the next sprint. Uh, there is an issue. Well, let's see here. Yeah, uh, MK2116 uh, was something that um, uh, we contemplated uh, planning for the current sprint. Um, I think it's basically a work in progress um, at this point. I'm not seeing it. There it is. Well, uh, yeah, so. I think this, this, we, I can assign this to. Is this the same thing that Ken's kind of working on right now? Yeah, is exactly. It's just. Is it wait. duplicate? Do you can have a ticket for this? Yeah, you can mark it as a duplicate. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say that's a duplicate right there. Well, there's there's something to discuss with this. I mean, is, is this what we're calling enclosure code, right? For the new SJ201? Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we are blocked. Are we just quick question, Michael? So the conversation over the weekend was switching to, um, you know, I2S from USB, like with the new firmware update. That will affect our closure code, right? Yes, it will. Okay. So we're kind of blocked until we dis dis decide well, let's how it's working with what we have now, if we can. And, okay. Um, but. The I don't think that's the most regardless thing. because the amps we have to get the amps working, which is a bug. It's not in the system right now. Uh, it's the thing that I'm going back and forth with Kevin on the most, but um, right. I don't. Okay, I don't think it affects it. I mean, if we uh, the things that Kevin's doing for the uh, noise cancellation, you know, the uh, the uh, I two S buff doesn't affect the code. In other words, it's not a code issue. So whether he fixes it or not, code doesn't change. Well, I thought it, I thought it had to do with how we're selecting a playback device possibly or something. No, yeah. it, 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 it has to do with the fact that we were going to try to do it in software that's probably not going to, not even in software, in a configuration change probably going to have to be done in hardware but I, I, I mean yeah I don't I don't think there's really any code change here if Kevin's not able to get it working in hardware we might be able to cut a ticket to say try to get it working by combining the two channels into one but I, I don't think it has to have a ticket outstanding that we revisit and ask what it is every couple of weeks or whenever we go through this well, so if you're saying that's not really blocking us, I mean, we could technically, we could technically have you know the enclosure code working and have Mark II's working without margin, and you would have to use the line out on the the board as opposed to the internal amplifier. No, 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 no. no. This has nothing to do with margin, to the best of my knowledge, and it doesn't matter about line out or not. What it has to do with regarding the I2S bus is pulling the noise from the speaker out of the microphone input and that's 
and uh, it's pretty much a hardware issue that he's dealing with and yeah. yeah it doesn't affect the software the enclosure code will not change one way or the other whether he's successful or not yeah but what i'm saying is we won't and that is a hardware requirement for bargin so we won't be able to do any bargin until that's resolved why do you believe that's tied to bargin uh because it's it's plain um you know, it's playing the output back. Well, my understanding is you're trying to match up the out the, the audio output with what we're hearing through the microphones, and then canceling them them out. Uh, so, you know, uh, yeah, but I don't think it has anything to do with barging. Is my point. I, I think barging no, is a completely different concept. That's well, that's, with, we have we have a listen up while we're playing output. Um, you know, things like that. Uh, Bargin is its own beast. And yes, but the cancellation of audio, the AEC, is is a requirement for Bargin, like a hardware requirement for Bargin. Like we can't really? do, yeah, we can't. I threw it on the Mark One. We didn't. <laughs> Mark One has no Bargin capabilities whatsoever. It's too yeah, loud. I, it's I too loud inside the. I don't believe that to be true. Is my point, Derek? I I believe but, that. Bargin is a function of refactoring our code. In other words, even if this were working in hardware, Bargin would not be working today because our code doesn't support it. We already talked about this. I mean, yes, yes, it does yes. support it in some cases, like music playing. Right. There's two different issues here. There's the hardware ability to do it, and then there's some software changes we need to make. You can barge into a song playing or something. Yeah, you would have to do some really, really, really tricky stuff to ever make a mark one work with bargin just because it can't when it's playing something um it can't hear anything it can't hear anything besides itself the microphone physically can't um it's just you know the, the music or it's speaking itself won't allow it to hear anything so you can't interrupt it that, and so the AD, be, but what i'm getting at and yes chris you are right there is Bargin that's working when you're playing an MP3. When you are playing a dialogue, Bargin will not work with the current code base, regardless of what you do with the hardware. So, right. So we're talking, maybe we should rename that with, rename that to uh, hardware. Uh, yeah, hardware Bargin and software Bargin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hardware yeah. noise cancellation. It's hardware noise cancellation. Well, it's not just noise well, cancellation, it's output cancellation. You're specifically right. subtracting okay. the output from the input in hardware. That's fine. That, that's fine. However you want it, that's technically correct. However you want to put it. But what I'm worried about is that we seem to feel like if this I2S problem gets resolved, our code base will magically support Bargin overnight. And the reality is yeah. it will still not support Bargin while a dialogue is being spoken until the code is altered to do so. Yeah, no, I, okay. Well, let's call it uh, AE, yeah, you're right. Um, I've been calling it Bargin just because we can't do it without the hardware being capable of it, which let's is- just, Let's specify hardware Bargin support. Yeah, or AE, actually I AEC- well, we don't say AE. Bargin here. Okay, I mean, you can, go ahead. Go ahead. No, we don't, like, we don't have to say <laughs> We'll call it one. It is. It is actually called AEC, acoustic echo cancellation. That's what is necessary. Yeah. Acoustic echo cancellation is a necessary hardware component to get good bargain. You need one. One is a prerequisite to the other. Um, for, I mean, okay. I don't know. Like a, you know, things can be done in software, but like I said, you'd have to be really. Uh, <laughs> a not gonna be that's, where I was, that's where I was going. Is that if Kevin can't get the I2S noise cancellation working, I bet you I could still get Bargin working while a dialogue's being played. Yeah, but the audio you are getting from that would be so crappy, it would be worthless. Yeah, and you're not going to do I it on the plan. I that's don't know sure. that. that that's they, awesome. they're, they're independent, like, you know, because, because the audio, because the dialogue is not going to be getting spoken at too loud of a volume necessarily, then potentially you could, but it would also mean, yeah, like, so yes, yes, you could, I think you could do dialogue interrupt without AEC. 
when the right. music is wrapped. And by the way, we also have a uh, what's it called? Active or activate or whatever or action button that could be potentially leveraged to do barge in by well, pushing a switch. That's how the mod one supports. Like if I, you scream would, at the mic, if you yell at the mic while that. it's doing stuff, then you can like technically barge in. So like, you know, over music, sorry. You can you can interrupt it over music if you yell at your device, but it's it's not a good experience at all. And like no. yeah. All I'm so, thinking except through is I, I consider barge in to be a separate issue. We can we can talk about them in the same breath. That's fine. Okay, yeah. Let's not let's not argue about the terminology. If we want to get more specific about the terminology then we can make that an offline discussion. Yeah. Well, okay. the, and the, there is the fact that, you know, for us to get what the XMOS promises, then we do need the I2S support. I mean, that's part, that's a big reason why we're using this XMOS chip is because of the AEC capability. And it's exactly what everyone else is using, not necessarily from XMOS, but from, from some DSP provider to be able to do this kind of communication while it's playing music. Um, so, you know, we got to get this thing to work. That's why we chose. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. Um, investigate why we get stereo audio on SJ201. Is that going to be done in the next sprint or two or not? Uh, yeah, we need to do that. Okay. So that's going to this sprint or next sprint? Uh, let's do it in this one. That's something that we could work with Kevin on. Okay, SJ201 test jig. We don't need that. It's down the road. Won't do. Won't do? No, no, not won't do. But uh, sorry, it's not. It's not this milestone. It's a future milestone. Okay. Is this a? That looks like a duplicate. It does look like a duplicate. It says SJ202. Oh, yep. you're right. Ha. It looks like a duplicate. <laughs> to the untrained eye. <laughs> uh, so the 202, actually, you can, um... yeah, never mind. Go ahead, that's fine. Okay. Uh, requirements doc, are we, is there a way we can write one of these? Uh, look, it's, I have something written from kind of a design perspective or from a product perspective, rather. But, um, you know, we don't have things like, engineering requirements, you know, like, you know, we need to be able to far field at, you know, 10 yards or, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. So anyway, I, I, I think it would be a, a good thing to look at that stuff. Milestone zero. What's that? This, this feels like the, the hardware requirements for milestone zero. Yeah, well, I think I, I mean, some of this stuff's kind of nebulous, though, because we don't really know how well the SJ201 is going to perform. Um, right, so these are things, and in some like, ways, yeah, just like Derek said, I mean, this is more of a user experience kind of thing. And the, um, you know, what are our expectations as to the performance of, of the device? Right. So what I have is the user experience side. So I'm like, you need to be able to, you know, interrupt it while it's playing music. You need to, you know, be able to have good quality sound. You need, to, you know, I just listed all the things. You know, we need the buttons for volume up and down and action, all that stuff. But in terms of, you know, the performance requirements, or the engineering aspects of, yeah, we don't have that. <clears throat> right. So what do I do with the ticket? Oh, so what do you do with the ticket? Um... Let's put it into the sprint 17. Yeah, I think in some ways we have to like actually have a board working and then we kind of reverse engineer what we want to, you know, like, is it working to our, you know, we can test and say, does it work at 30 feet? You know, then, you know say, oh, it's not working at 30 feet. We need it to be better than that or something. But, okay. Ken, you were looking at this. Are you, you want me to put this in the current sprint, the enclosure and version, core version? Yeah, no, no, no. That's that should be. I don't know why it's in the backlog. I'm working on it, or you know, I spoke to you about it, and I'm still yeah. Recently, but I'll uh, I'll get the enclosure code to be updated to 
put new stuff in once we figure out what that last value encoding is. So yeah, yeah, put it in the current sprint, please. Okay, uh, system diagram for SJ201 based Mark II. I think we can put that out in the next sprint. Next I'd sprint? Like to have it. I, I think it would be really useful. Like we keep referring to the flow, but if the, if the circuit's gonna change, you know, I don't, there's no need to update that right now. At the bottom, there was also a debug the project rollover device. Uh, assign that to me or Derek um, and put that active. I mean, that's got to be at the top of our. That, that might be a duplicate. I thought we already had one of those. I don't know, but I wouldn't see it in, in backlog. So it needs to get on my radar or Derek's radar. Yeah, I still I haven't received anything yet. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get it. Hold on. I want to do the right thing here. Yeah, here we have this bug here, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that should is that the same thing? No, it's uh, not. These these are dead dead device. Like we're not sure exactly why. Well, uh, yeah, I mean th this speaks to the issue that we're having with the re-speaker board. Okay, which I have so there's a different. And that may be related, but one of them is it uh, sometimes rebooting it a number of times will fix the issue, and this one seems to be. No matter how many times they reboot it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so I, these are different? I just think we need the rollover one for now. For now. Okay. And Ken's working? No, I don't know if put it in the sprint. You guys can, you can give it to me or Derek, whoever. Um, it's kind of Derek for now. Um, We should probably get this done too, shouldn't we? The misspelled method name just, or do we, do we tell them what to do or I forget where we left this. Yeah, so that just, why don't you, um, it's, it's in the existing uh, skill code or whatever, the, uh, the uh, interface.py. I mean, I don't know how you want to get that out there to them. Okay, we got, there's a comment here. We're gonna, I was gonna make a change in a branch that they can. That's what this I was Mm -hmm. Disable update. If it's, if it's a mock to high skill, then you can update it in the master and and uh, change the. Isn't isn't that also in the Microsoft skills repo, and it'll update automatically on their device? No, I think there's a there's a Kitty branch to that though. That they're probably. Oh right. right, right, I'm pretty sure you can delete MK two one thirty eight. It is done. We'll check with Michael, but I don't think we have the ability to update the firmware on the SJ201. It's marked as done, so. Yeah, the answer is yes. Delete it, you know, whatever. Uh, this disable update, we were just talking about this earlier. Is this, this is a communication issue, right? Or is this, it should still be in the sprint? It should still be in the sprint. It's assigned to me. and. I'm going to assign it's it like to Derek. Duplicate. If it's not, I mean, if it is a duplicate, then delete it. But if it's not, what I have to do is I have to update the ticket with the exact configuration change that has to be made. And then I'm going to assign it to Derek, communicate that to the account. So. Now, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so I think that's everything in the backlog related to my tomato. Uh, Milestone one or milestone zero? Is that? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So some of this is at the top of the backlog, and some of it's in friends. All right. So the next question then is: Is everybody 
uh, packed full of work for the sprints? Uh, my answer to that question is yes. <laughs> um, yes, and you got plenty, plenty to do in here for two weeks. All right, Ken, are you uh, you booked solid with the stuff for two weeks? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, if I'm not, trust me, I can find something to do. <laughs> Doesn't seem to be a problem. Certainly, the intense stuff would consume me. So yeah. Oh no, but that's just a review. Yeah, I think I'm okay. If not, I'll raise my hand. Okay. Derek, you got comfortable with what's in here for you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to start the sprint then. Any objections? No. I just want to discuss one thing briefly um, after we stop recording. Are we really uh, <laughs> giving everyone that entire experience? <laughs> oh, I wrote it down. No, it's just, I don't know if it's sensitive or not. I just err on the side of caution. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Sprint created, go forth and sprint. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody.